it made sense for me to have a brand new car. I mean, I worked so hard for me to be here. I need a brand new car. Hello there, I'm Thea and this is my love nest. Welcome and thank you so, so much for clicking on this video. Now that you're here, please watch it all the way to the end. A very big shout out to everybody who has subscribed to my channel so far, everybody who likes my videos, everybody who comments and everybody who recommends my contents to other people. Thank you so, so much. And I appreciate you. If you haven't subscribed, please do click on the subscribe button and put the notification bell on. Um, yeah, man, I just thought I should share my um, radiography journey with everybody uh, so I realized that people are, more, are also interested rather in knowing about me personally and my radiography journey um, you know just touch base on like the transition from being a student to being um, qualified and everything that was happening in between that space. I've been working from 2020. I did my comp serve in 2020. So that is a very short space of time. I mean, comparing 2020 to 2022, but a lot has happened in between. I've learned so much, um, you know, and of course I'm gonna touch on everything that everybody has been asking about, which is money. We're gonna talk a little bit about my financial lessons and my financial expectations, things like that. Um, yeah, man, let's just take it from the beginning. So you may already know by now that I did my um, degree at UJ. I started in 2016 and it was a four-year bachelor's degree. Cool. Um, man, as a student, it was it was nice, man. Like student days were not bad. It was like it was okay well it was not like a walk in a park but it wasn't that bad either you know um all that you had to worry about as a student was make sure you pass make sure that you accumulate all the hours you need be prepared for your assessments and just have a good record that's all you know um so as a student there wasn't really much to be worried about um except of course that you always had to be on top of your game all you had to worry about was um accumulate the hours you need for that year so say for example um in first year you are supposed to have um i don't know 500 hours at the end of the year that's all that you're worried about accumulating your 500 hours and then you also had to worry about your assessments so you get assessed by your clinical tutor in the hospital and it also get assessed by a lecturer from UJ so how assessments used to work was um, on a random day okay you'd also be told in advance that okay on a, such a, on a on such and such a day your lecturer is gonna come to assess you so what happens is they will pick a patient for you if you're lucky you can pick a patient for yourself and you do basically everything with the patient and they'll be assessing how you communicate with the patient they'll be assessing how you touch the patient how you position the patient how you handle your equipment your presentation as in are you wearing your scrubs are you clean are you is your hair done well not really done but is your hair neat are your nails short and clean do you have a name badge on um you know like they'll be assessing everything basically and when you're done with your patient you have to now evaluate the image that comes up say if there's any abnormalities any normalities um label the anatomy you know like everything do everything they'll assess your progress on everything so first year had its own exam second year its own third year and it went complex and deeper as you went through the years so basically that's all that you had to be worried about uh, we also had a logbook you know our logbook was you have to record how many exams you did in that year like how many chests did you do how many abdomens did you do how many brain scans did you do how many portables did you do all of those little things that's all that you had to worry about basically as a student and um you always had your clinical tutors to help you other students were there it was being a student was nice guys it was i miss it now i never thought i would because when you're a student you just can't wait to be done and dusted like i can't wait to leave this place i want to go work i want to go make money i want to be in the hospital because i'll be earning money because also at that time i trained in a public hospital so in public hospitals we were not getting paid so you were just 
basically there as a student we were not getting paid so we had like a lot of reasons we couldn't wait to leave the environment because we needed to get paid and um yeah i mean student life days were nice but it also had its ups and downs you know we you were failing exams um tests and things sort of coming together it, it also had its own stresses but overall it was not a nightmare then came comserve year so um if you haven't watched my video about comserve or if you're wondering uh, about how to prepare for comserve or what to expect things like that i did a video on comserve and i will also put it in the description box if i don't link it at the end but um yeah comserve year came the nicest thing about comserve is you don't have to apply for comserve they just place you like you choose your top is it top four or top three hospitals you want to practice at and they place you just like that so cool comes over here came and when we went to sign contracts um the one thing we were looking forward to was to know our salaries and you're there signing your contract and your salary is there and you're like i cannot wait i can't wait for it to be month end already so that you know anyway um yeah i mean we went in for my comms year and it wasn't all bad um but you know when you're getting into a new environment with new people you have to learn everything about that environment learn the people there learn um the culture of that place you had to learn how to um address certain doctors like you literally have to learn everything from scratch and learn the departmental protocols because what i used to do in simja as a student is not always what they do in this new place that i'm at um how they print their x-rays like small things like that like how you print x-rays would matter so you had to adjust to all of that and as far as working environment is concerned you're meeting new people and there's no students here like where i did my concert there were no students it was just qualified so you are meeting these people and they all have like there's groups you know like this group does not like this group and this person has their own people backing them up and as a new person each group is going to try and recruit you into their group luckily we were like four there was four of us when you they were all doing our concert so we were able to form our little alliance you know so that you don't fall in either of the groups you're just floating in the middle whatever feels right to you do and yeah man concert year was okay um let me touch a little bit on the money side so we went to sign contracts i mean you sign your contract um they do write the how much you're going to be getting and they wrote like the whole sum as in like what you're going to get per year and i'm not going to be naming the exact figures because i'm just not comfortable naming if you need to know how much radiographers make in a year you're more than welcome to research in other ways but yeah they write there i'll just say for example they said okay for this year you're going to be earning 12 rands So from there you're taking all oh, these 12 rands divided by 12 months it means a year I mean a month I'll be making 1 rand cool I can live with 1 rand you get your contract to sign you're happy you wait for month end Now you've already calculated it it's okay this is what's going to happen end 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 come month end The money you are getting is not what you calculated instead of you getting 1 rand you're like getting 75 cents and you're like what happened to the other money where is my 25 cents guys tax you yeah. tax humbled me so when you're there getting your contracts you don't even think of let me sub- subtract my tax money from this no and yo my first salary was i'd never got to enjoy actually my first and my second salary it was a mess So with my first salary I was moving into a new place because for the first month I was traveling from home to where I was working. It was doable but it was kind of strenuous because it was a bit far. So my first um goal was that as soon as I get my salary I'm getting a place to stay. So we're looking for places and looking for places and I eventually found one and um one of the girls I was working with was like no let's share the place and then we shared the place so we went like 50/50. 
But you know, when you're moving into a new place, um, you know, you're moving into a new apartment and you have to pay like a very big lump sum of money. You're supposed to pay like the deposit, which is equal to the monthly rental fee. So you're paying the deposit, you're paying the rent itself, the first month's uh, rent. You are paying things like admin fee. I don't even know why it had to be so expensive. Like you're paying something like 1,500 rents for admin. You're paying for the key. You are paying for, what is it called? Credit, check, history, whatever. Like, oh, guys, now my first salary just went into like moving into a new place. You have to pay for the, um, pay somebody who's going to be helping you transport your things. You have to buy small, um, appliances you have to buy things like your bed because you can't take your bed from home what are you gonna sleep on when you get home but well you can but i just didn't want to do that i had to buy a bed your curtains like i was starting from scratch bedding everything you're buying everything so with my first salary that was basically all that happened all my money had to go into that and unfortunately i didn't get my second salary on time you know it was like there were issues in hr where yeah, it was just not in the system, I didn't get paid, whatever, whatever, it was a whole lot of a mess. But um, as time went on, we adjusted and everything was cool, you know, you get used to the money you're getting, you're able to plan around it, you know, you, you've been taught about budgeting, you, you know, you're on top of your game, everything is flowing, you're good, you're okay. So one other thing I forgot to mention was that when I went to open my uh, bank account, so I did a new account for my salary and whatever, I didn't want to have my salary be paid on the same account I had as a student and whatever. So I got a new, I opened a new account with a completely different bank and they created a credit card for me. I didn't request for, the, for a credit card because like I remember they were like no you can qualify for an overdraft so we're gonna make an overdraft for you whatever and i don't know what happened but that overdraft situation didn't work out so instead they gave me a credit card which i didn't ask for but i was like okay it's fine i'll keep the credit card um you know just so i can boost my credit record whatever if i want to make a big purchase like buy a car i'll have a what is it a credit history because i didn't have anything i didn't have any credit in my name i didn't have a store account i didn't have a contract anyway i was clean like i didn't have anything so i took that credit card and to be quite honest i never used that credit card because what i was getting at that time was enough I, like i was like i'm okay i'm what i was happy with what i was getting so i didn't use that credit card but every month I get, I had to pay for having the credit card, even if I didn't use it. And it was like for a ridiculous amount. I had like 12,000 that I could use on that credit card. And I realized, no man, it's not worth it. I went, I called them and I'm like, please reduce this amount of money because it's a lot. And I don't want to have so much money to my name that I'm not going to use. It just, felt, it just felt useless for me to have a credit card with so much money for me to use, which I didn't actually use and I wasn't paying for. Yeah, so we reduced that to like 1,500 rands and I kept it there because I was still on some, I need to have a credit life. I need to exist in the credit world. So um, COVID hit, we went on lockdown and things changed we no longer going out like our lives were different we were on lockdown and you know when my salary came in it was just for rent um groceries and to make sure that i can go back to work that was all that my salary was doing so i had enough at my disposal to save and i had also dedicated like that year towards home like i'm gonna work at home change what needs to be changed whatever whatever and I was able to do that honestly. I'm really, really grateful that during that COVID period when there was lockdown, I still had an income. And because of um, the, the lockdown situation, I was able to save as much as I did and I was able to do the stuff I wanted to do. And yeah, man, the year went on. Um, Comsev year was now approaching an end. Cool, when the year ended, now you have to start looking for a job because um, as a community service radiographer, you get placed. You don't necessarily have to apply, go for interviews or whatever. You just get placed wherever there's space. 
So now that common service is coming to an end, I have to look for a job myself, look for placement. Cool, I did all of that and wasn't really winning until towards the end of the year. I think it was like around beginning of December, if not like mid December, when my manager at that time called me. He's like, yo, Theo, how's our job hunting situation going? I'm like, oh, I'm looking, but not really winning. Um, whatever. I actually had a job like on standby but i was not happy with the terms man like there was just a lot of terms and conditions and it was not a full-time thing where you had to come in sometimes when they need you and when they don't need you like it's just, it's good for if you want to do it part-time like if you're gonna be fully employed by um the government or a particular hospital and you have a permanent job then you can take that as a side thing so i had that hanging but i was not really happy with it then my manager was like listen there's um post that just came out for COVID, but it's a three-month contract so you can apply for that while you're still looking you can you know do the contract the contract so i applied for the contract COVID contract and they took me it was for three months it was for yeah three months period and so what you have to understand is as far as salaries are concerned there's notches according to your levels and grades so as a comserv radiographer that is a entry level um, salary then you get to grade one radiographer it also has its notch then um, you get your grade twos and whatever whatever so i was a grade one radiographer right and as a grade one radiographer i was getting um instead of now getting one rand i think it was like hmm, just a couple percentages more let me just say it was like 150 and because and because i was on contract it meant that I, I didn't have any nothing was binding me with the government like i didn't have to pay my um pension fund medical aid um unions you know all of this deductions that they make on your salary when you're on contract you get your whole sum like everything so i was like you know what i'm happy three months down the line contract is coming to an end and then they're like yo listen we're renewing the contract it's gonna be for a year hmm was i not happy girl we pushed and then i'm like okay i think i'm gonna get a car you know because now i have money and um sort of settled everything is looking good this is like on my um first year my contract year so it was extended from the first of april to the 31st of march the following year so i'm like for this year i'm gonna be making this much so i'll have this much to save i'll have this much to my disposal this is what's gonna be happening i was on par and you know i was like ready now to start looking for a car and i'm starting to calculate so how much will i be paying per month blah 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 and then i got to a point where i'm like wait a minute i'm working as a contract radiographer so if i'm going to be getting a car and financing it that's like me committing to five or six years of paying for my car and um what's gonna happen after that what if i don't immediately get a job how am i gonna pay for it am i gonna use all of my savings how am i gonna pay for the deposit of the car like i had so many questions and the thought of not buying a car was sort of hmm, not really making sense anymore so until i like spoke to my guy about it guys when you choose your man choose properly like choose this video is not about choosing men and whatever but i'm just gonna say that how a man thinks how he is guys it really is important anyway let me stop rambling about somebody's son and stick to the topic spoke to this guy i'm like listen i want to get a car but this is what i'm worried about and he's like why don't you just buy your car cash you don't necessarily need to have a brand new car because that's what i wanted like yo my first car should be like brand new i want to, i want to be the first one to smell my car you know how we feel about how we are um i was like that and it made sense for me to have a brand new car i mean i worked so hard for me to be here i need a brand new car 
and after talking lengthily about it and it actually really made sense for me that i can't really afford a brand new car because that is a five year commitment and so far i am sure about my salary for the next 12 months what's going to happen after that so okay we're like let's say for getting a second hand decent car um cash cool that was not the plan and if you want to know how that worked out um i can do a separate video on that but yeah we worked on getting a car and got a car uh we had to buy it cash and then now the contract is coming to an end so i my as i was working under contract we were still in the same environment that i had always worked at as a concept videographer and at this time i'm like an expert of the place you know when there's like somebody who needs orientation i'm like i'm your girl like it was home the place had already become home and the hospital was not like super busy but it was not quiet either you could do it i enjoyed working there honestly i enjoyed it the working hours the patients um the staff as in like external staff we had our own quarrels within the department as videographers but okay most of it was not always bad but i enjoyed working with like the doctors there the casualty staff like everybody like one thing you have to remember with health is that it's a family we are we are all intertwined like you will always have a relationship with the nurses the doctors the physios everybody you will know everyone you will have a relationship with all of them so i loved working with everybody there although i didn't really know everyone but i had like the regular people i knew and i enjoyed working with them then um yeah contract is coming to an end we are about to kiss the good money bye okay not necessarily kiss the good money bye but you're kissing the contract money bye because um i'll explain when i get to how to me now transitioning into a permanent um radiographer so from the 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 transition from now being a student to being a community service radiographer to being a qualified radiographer although I was in permanent but I was like a qualified radiographer was now starting to show like in in my in my speech in my confidence in how I interacted with patients my conflict resolution um how you deal with disrespectful patients how you you're basically the senior actually in the department and you get to feel like I'm a senior okay I was um at this period contract period i was like second junior but i felt like i'm i'm a senior i'm a qualified i can stand for myself you know i can i can advocate for myself back when you were a student you couldn't really advocate for yourself if you did something wrong the doctor's going to come and you the doctor comes and complains then your qualified is going to you know handle it for you or whatever if you're in theater and they shout at you you can't talk back you're like mm, i have to just you know but at this point you are able to speak up for yourself if a doctor comes and they feel like you're doing a crappy job you're able to tell them listen this is my field of study i know what i'm doing this is why i'm doing it and you get the feel anyway um contract is ending we start job hunting now job hunting for like a job because contract ends and then um the ceo of our hospital made an announcement that listen um the covid contracts are not going to end and we have an option of either keeping 50% of you guys or extending the contracts to be 6 more months and the ceo had of obviously chosen to extend the contract the contract for six months you know keep everybody for six months instead of keeping 50 percent for a year and um unfortunately though in the budget radiographers were not included so it was bad like that but yeah when i say god is faithful yeah when you trust god with everything when when you're like god i am depending on you i don't know what's gonna be my next move like i need to see you make a way here He really does come through because as at that point I'm like God um when the contract was ending when the contract was ending I was like God I need you to come through you know I need something something has happened I had gone for like two or three interviews before um at that time 
and none of them had called me back so my only hope was this contract and then they said they were extending it for six months and i'm like okay god is that you then they're like there's no budget for radiographers i'm like god what is this what is gonna happen to me like i'm staying in this place that i have to pay rent and i can't just up and leave um if i'm up if i up and leave i'm going back home but how is how are things gonna work like god now i cannot be unemployed now i'm your favorite child like no not with me so thankfully um i think three days before the end of my contract literally contract was ending on the 31st of march around the 28th or so i was called and i was uh, offered a job like yeah you remember the interview wara, 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 you got the job i was like god god anyway um cool now we have to move from where i was to a new environment and now i was in a much smaller a much much smaller institution and things here are so flipping different like i trained in a massive hospital like in a huge hospital with like 78 radiographers and so many radiology departments all the special uh, specializations you can think of like i trained in a big hospital and then when i did my com survey it was in a district hospital not quite big really small one department but um it was conducive you, you still kept the the, the the day going it was still okay then when i got another job it's a super super smaller institution like we don't have wards like it's a small hospital and when i got there like god if this is where you want me to be okay i'm trusting you and i feel like i i trust your plan more than i trust what i think so make it work out and um come to come month end as now a permanent radiographer y'all i got the shock of my life <laughs> i'm like wait such a massive difference okay the money is not bad neat. so what happens is they will tell you your whole lump sum like how much are you making in a year you calculate it you divide by 12 you're like okay this is good money until you have to consider things like your tax now i'm a permanent radiographer i'm uh, paying tax i'm contributing towards my pension fund i have medical aid subs um what is it called this yes. medical aid i have unions like there's just a little there's small things that are deducting money everywhere to a point where when you eventually get your whole money it's not everything you had expected to get it's not bad either so i was like what the hell like you're you're anyway um yeah transitioned into a smaller department with and if it's a small department just know everybody is in one space we are all in one in one room we're all in each other's space we we get to know each other like that we spend a lot of our times together you know and i must just say that you guys god god is good yes i because because of where i had did where i did my comserve and the year of a contract I felt like this is a good place, but there's just something toxic about the people I'm working with. Okay, not that they were toxic, but we didn't have a relationship. This let me put it like, let me just say it like that. We didn't have a relationship. You know, um, it was always superficial. It was always work related, and I'm okay with that. But it was it got to a point where you can just feel, man. You can just tell when something is not okay. You know. So what I wanted more than anything was God. I need a, a healthy working environment. Like I need to have good people to work with. And y'all, the colleagues I have right now are the uh, a bunch of amazing people. God really does answer prayers. They are great people. They are awesome. And although the place is very small, I feel like um, there's always room to learn things. You know, when you're in like a bigger hospital, you get experience in terms of patients and all these other specialties in radiography and when you go to a smaller department you get experience in th- in managerial things basically um but the growth y'all yeah, the growth i i can see it i there's a huge 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 difference between the me that i was when i was still a student in like 2016 to 2019 and the me that i am right now as a qualified you know it is 
there's been a lot of growth a lot of confidence a lot of evolving um and you know as far as independence goes um yeah man you 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 grow basically um what this journey has taught me more especially money wise is that you can, you'd never really have a lot of money hey like as soon as you have like this much of money you're also going to have this much of expenses so it should just be able to manage it and maybe like um live within your means although in this economy right now is really 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 difficult for us with um living below our means but trying as hard as you can is really the key and another thing is how you know friends and families will feel like because you don't have dependents then you have money at your disposal for them you know people will randomly ask you for money like you know you get paid on the 31st of the month but like on the 21st 10 days before payday and it's like 20 days and i only got like paid 20 days ago somebody's asking you yo please borrow me this much money and you're like i don't have the money you know another thing you need to learn with money is to be able to say no to people because people do take advantage hey um or to tell them that you can't you don't have because people your people will take you for a ride okay and if you're that one person that can't ask people like you know you have your people that if i need something i can either go to this person or this one then for you it, you you become in a compromise situation compared to somebody who also asks from people that ask you you know you get people that ask um from you that you never ask from and then they get that impression that they always has money or whatever like can they have people yeah anyway um yeah this was um my story of the transition from being a student to being a qualified and like everything that has happened in between there's been a lot of things that happened a lot of questioning you know like god are you sure why am i even here why is this even happening do i want to be here there's been a lot of those moments and there's been a lot of moments where you're like god i know this was you god i know you brought me here for a reason i know this is happening for a reason and in the journey man you you get to make relationships you get to meet people um god that there's there's a lot of that happens you know um people that feed you um you know you meet people that make you see things differently like did you know actually you could be like an entrepreneur in radiography and you're like how and man there's as soon as you step out of school and you experience different people at different levels you get to understand things differently because as a student a lot of times you're only thinking i'm going to be a radiographer I work at the hospital and that will be it if i'm feathering my studies i'll get a masters and probably be a lecturer then when you get into the real world you meet people that actually tell you um make you see or make you realize that there's so many other doors into um this thing that you are at so man it's been a beautiful journey i am loving it so far and we'll just see what um the journey has for us as time goes on the experience the growth and yeah i mean i'm excited for everything that's about to come i'm excited for where we are right now and i could say we are content I mean, god is good yeah oh god until i see you again guys this is my radiography experience this is this has been my journey thus far and if you have not subscribed please do subscribe so that i can come and tell you a little bit more um yeah until i see you again please take care and share the love bye